The iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max on paper received a pretty massive upgrade in the camera department. But just how much better is it compared to something like last year's iPhone 13 Pro Max? Honestly, we'll tell you right now, when it comes to everyday point and shoot, you're just using the main sensor, you're not editing the photos, and you're in good lighting like outdoors and the sun is out, they look pretty much the exact same. I do think that the 14 Pro Max does handle HDR a bit better. There are some upgrades there. And so if you're looking at deeper, darker colors of the picture or brighter areas, it's ever so slightly better at managing those shadows and highlights. But really, 99% of the time to me, they look uh, about the same. And I'm guessing they do for you here as well. That's why we're going to take a closer look at some of the bigger points of emphasis that Apple highlighted at the event and some of the bigger changes that come with this new camera system. And so we'll start with the obvious, and that's the 48 megapixel wide angle lens. Apple added a 48 megapixel main sensor this year, but most of the time you're actually going to be taking photos in 12 megapixels thanks to pixel binning. In theory, those photos should actually be a bit better from that sensor since it is larger and sharper, but as you can see from our earlier comparison, that's not always the case or it's just not always obvious. But when we start looking at true 48 megapixel photos, which means you have to turn on the Pro Raw setting for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, if you take a look at that compared to the same shot taken on the main camera with the 13 Pro Max, which will max out its resolution or its pixels at 12 megapixels, you can see the difference is so much more noticeable. The photos are much sharper and in some instances, provide us with a great deal of natural bokeh, or that depth of field look like something we get out of portrait mode. It's not nearly as dramatic as portrait mode, but this isn't over-processed or computational per se. This is just the larger and sharper lens doing all of the legwork. Things really start to become apparent when you start cropping in. The 48 megapixel photos remain sharper and more clear when cropping in compared to the 12 megapixel photo. This isn't surprising because it is what we expected, but it's still great to gauge just how much better it is. And if you're someone who really likes to crop in on your photos after the fact, and you don't wanna lose out on any quality or detail, then you can absolutely do that and get away with it with that 48 megapixel sensor. Now, the downside to this is that when you use ProRAW at 48, megapixels, uh, the file size is massive. If you're going to be constantly using this setting, you better have a 512 gigabyte iPhone or higher because the file sizes are ranging anywhere from 60 megabytes to 100 megabytes per photo in size, and that will quickly add up and eat away at your storage. Overall, the 48 megapixel Pro RAW capability is really a huge feature to this camera system, especially if you're really into photography and allows for far more flexibility when going out on shoots and taking photos. It's definitely an upgrade compared to the 13 Pro Max and obviously a bigger upgrade when you start going down the line of older iPhones. So obviously the 48 megapixel photo is great for cropping in and retaining quality, but it also allows for a very different focal length per se at just a button click away. So what happens here is that the 48 megapixel sensor will now crop in at 2X automatically and kind of giving you the illusion that you have an extra sensor with optical zoom quality. Without having to do this in post, you can now just go ahead and open up the camera app and see that you have 0.5 for ultra wide, 1X for your main, 2x also coming from the main which is that crop that we just talked about and then the 3x from the telephoto lens so with the iphone 13 pro max you have either that 0.5 ultra wide the one from the main sensor or 3x uh, from the telephoto so you're slightly limited now compared to that iphone 14 pro max the photos that are also coming out of this look really good again optical quality zoom and i personally don't think you can tell that this is a sensor crop and not really an extra lens at this focal length taking the picture Lastly, when it comes to photos, I wanted to touch on just a few other quick areas. I didn't get a whole lot of time to test these areas, but I did want to point out a couple of things. Apple stressed that night mode or lower light photos would be better across all lenses. And while I didn't get to test this as much as I would have liked to, I did not get a really good feeling for night mode being that much better, honestly especially when we moved on down to each sensor, there was a bit more noise and light reflections going on with the iPhone 13 Pro Max compared to the 14 Pro Max. But looking at the sky and clouds, I'd say that it looks slightly brighter and better on the 14, but again, something that we need to test a little bit more on before we make definitive statements here. But if you wanted to see a dedicated low light photography or night mode video, let me know in the comments down below. 
Portrait mode honestly looks the same to me for the most part. I snapped a few photos and I kind of stopped because, well, it looks exactly the same compared to the 13 Pro Max. Apple didn't really say that there were other massive improvements to portrait mode, but the few images that, again, that I took here, they looked the same to me. Apple did make some changes to the selfie cam, however, and the biggest change is the inclusion of autofocus for the first time. That doesn't really translate when it comes to photos, um, unless I was out of focus, but for the most part, uh, most of the time I was in focus, and so you can see here that they look good. Um, there are some other people out there having major differences in HDR. I didn't really get that, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It's just in the picture that I took, I didn't really get any huge differences in HDR, but it is seemingly a better camera. And also you won't have to worry about ever shifting out uh, of focus because now you have autofocus. Lastly, let's talk about video. The same thoughts really do apply to standard 4K video coming out of each camera. Again, no edits, just point and shoot at that 4K resolution. They both pretty much look the same with the 14 Pro Max being a bit better in the same HDR areas that I pointed out in the beginning of the video with the photo section. It's the same, it translates the same way to video. The biggest update here for the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the new action mode and some updates to cinematic mode. So let's quickly start with cinematic mode. This feature is something I might find myself using more now that it supports 4K video quality compared to the 13 Pro Max getting 1080 resolution. And also uh, you get 4K 24 or 30 frames per second option, which you did not have before. You just had 1080p at 30 frames per second. So the biggest difference that you're going to see here would mostly just be the frame rate with the iPhone 14 Pro Max being at the kind of the cinematic standard of 24 frames per second and also in 4K resolution. So it just looks better to, uh, you know, in comparison to the iPhone 13 Pro Max at 1080, 30 frames per second. And then we have action mode, which is Apple's new video mode that the company offers and says is near gimbal quality stabilization. And during my testing, I've noticed that, uh, well, it does a good job of maintaining very good stabilization, especially for when you decide to really chase things around. Maybe you're chasing your kids around or your dog, or in my case, a dog robot. But when you compare it to the already good stabilization that we have on the 13 Pro Max uh, and the 14 Pro Max in just your normal video modes, um, it's kind of hard to justify using action mode on a regular basis, which again, I don't think Apple was saying you should use this all the time. Uh, so you would really want to save it for those more extreme moments when you're really doing a lot of movement. If you're just kind of walking around like I'm doing here, which I did put a lot of emphasis in that walking. I was walking kind of hard on purpose to see if I can get the stabilization to appear any better or not. Uh, and it does look better on the 14 Pro Max. Uh, you can tell that there's definitely less uh, jitteriness compared to the 13 Pro. Now, the one biggest thing that you're gonna notice here is that the action mode actually tops out at 2.8K and does not look nearly as good in terms of quality and resolution compared to the 4K that we have with the 13 Pro Max, or if you were just in standard 4K video recording on the 14 Pro Max. So in most cases, the natural stabilization that you get from these cameras is probably good enough to skip action mode so you don't lose out on that quality because again, the stabilization was already good to begin with. But if you're really shaking your phone around and you're in an extreme case, I guess having action mode is kind of a nice to have. Overall, I do think that the 14 Pro Max is a nice upgrade over the 13 Pro Max when it comes to the cameras, but it's mostly for a few specific use cases, like having 48 megapixels at your disposal for that optical quality zoom that we talked about, or just taking a really good photo and having all that detail and maintaining that detail and quality and sharpness when zooming in in post. Cinematic mode does feel more useful for me now. I'm not sure if it's gonna be for you, but for me, I really like having that 4K 24 frames per second option. But for the rest of the stuff, it just kind of feels too close to say definitively if one is truly a better option or not. I really do think that the 48 megapixel sensor is worth it. And if you think you're gonna take a lot of those pro raw photos in 48 megapixels, then yes, you should definitely look at the upgrade here. But if you're just taking photos, point and shoot right out of the camera and you're not messing with a lot of settings, I really do think you can get away with the 13 Pro Max for another year and then take a look at what the 15 has to offer. Of course, I would love to know your thoughts on everything in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you agree, disagree? Go ahead and let me know in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.